Hot Springs Village Inside Out is a closer look at the greatness of Hot Springs Village, Arkansas and the surrounding areas, people, places, experiences. Hot Springs Village is one of the most beautiful places on earth. Join me, Randy Cantrell, and my co-host Dennis Simpson as we engage in weekly conversations to explore Hot Springs Village Inside Out. Today's show is brought to you by Central Arkansas's favorite radio station, KVRE. Find them on the dial at 92.9 FM. Stream them live at kvre.com. Remax of Hot Springs Village. The award-winning Remax of Hot Springs Village is the largest real estate office inside the village with over 30 full-time agents and support staff. Visit them to learn more about this beautiful place to solve your real estate needs. Call them today at 1-800-364-9007. Find them online at explorehsv.com. They are Remax of Hot Springs Village at 1-800-364-9007 or online at explorehsv.com. Ike Eisenhower State Farm. Ike and his award-winning team have been serving the insurance needs of folks all around Hot Springs Village since 1998. Ike has qualified for State Farm's President's Club, Chairman's Circle, and Hot Springs Village Insurance Agent of the Year. Call Ike Eisenhower State Farm today at 501-984-4100. That's 501-984-4100. Find them online at IkeEisenhower.net. Call them today for all your insurance needs because, like a good neighbor, Ike Eisenhower State Farm is there. A thousand days, Randy. A thousand days. Mm-hmm. One thousand. Seems remarkable. You, you, let's see, a thousand days ago, you didn't have beanies with their name on them. No. You certainly weren't in the village. Mm-mm. What a change a thousand days has made. What what did we say? Three hundred episodes, three hundred and fifteen? Yeah, we're probably I don't know, we're in the three ten, three twenty range, three hundred and twenty or so. But in we'll dog shout it was like seven thousand days. So there doesn't it? Go. Doesn't it? In some ways it does, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> I, had, I had a shout out this morning, uh, Mr. Thomas Gore, who has been texting me and he reminds me of Brad Beaumont because he's got a million great questions. He really does. Yeah. Um, but Thomas, just this morning, now we've been texting back and forth, you know, where, where Saline County, what kind of houses, blah, 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 blah. And he texts me this morning, Randy, and he asked me, so now why did Randy relocate from Dallas to HSV? And I thought, <laughs> have you ever been huh? to Dallas? Have you ever been to HSV? <laughs> well, I wanted to say, I wanted to say traffic. I wanted to say trees. I wanted to say people. I wanted to say, I thought I'd let you put it in your words were a thousand days. I meet more people probably because I'm I'm my sensitivity is heightened to the DFW. Right. Right? But there's an awful right. lot of people there's an awful lot of people over here in HSV that are from the Dallas Fort Worth area. And having been in the Dallas Fort Worth area for thirty plus years, uh the place is the, the place has exploded. I mean, to be blunt, it's it's huge. You know, it's approaching eight million people. Uh, the state of Arkansas has three million. That'll give you some context. Uh, so, in when I was in my thirties, great. I'm ambitious. I'm climbing. I'm I'm hard charging, and it just felt vibrant and kind of the place to be. It's great when you're in your thirties. Even great in your forties. Started losing its luster when I was in my fifties, and you know, by the time I got to my sixties, I'm like, okay, I'm ready for I'm ready for some change of pace. I have said over and over. Had I been, you know, time and place is important and context. Had I encountered the village in my 30s, I would have loved it, but I would have never considered buying a home here. And it just, I'm like, yeah, it's great to go visit, but yeah, I'm just, so there's a time and there's a time and place, I think, in everybody's life. And uh, yes, the place was established largely as a retirement golfing community. I'm not retired and I'm not a golfer, but I'm still here. Uh, you know, so I don't know if that answers the question, but. Well, 
I was going to make note that, you know, you and I have talked about that the psychologist will tell you that you're basically a different person every decade or so. And your 30s, I mean, you, it, it would have been nice. It's still something you like. But at the same time, you know, it's not it's not all the all that you need. And as you get older and ready to retire and ready to be more comfortable and, you know, I, 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 I heard as you were telling the story, I thought I can imagine you in your 50s early fifties sitting in an endless traffic jam for two hours and going, mm, there's gotta be a better way than this. Right. Yeah. It, it wears on you. It wears on you for sure. Now I came from Oklahoma city, so it's not like I moved from some small town to DFW and you know, in Oklahoma city sure. is a, is a sprawling metropolitan area, not near the population density, but as far as land mass, huge, it is really, mm -hmm. really sp a spread out place. Um, just feels different. Just the whole, the whole psychology of the place is different. The whole psychology of HSV is, is very different too. So it's not for everybody. And there are people that are listening to us. There are people that, you know, have communicated to us. I mean, most recently we, we heard from somebody who, who thinks that the elephant in the room is being stepped around when it comes to crime. And I responded back to them. We're not stepping around anything. It, it that elephant does not exist. If you think there's an elephant in the room with crime stats here uh, inside the village, they had they had seen some crime stats about Hot Springs. And I would even argue that Hot Springs, based on seasonality, I'm sure when there's an influx of tourists and whatnot, there's going to be way more police reports. Now, what are those crimes going to be? I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm, I haven't studied all the stats, but I can just tell you, those of you that have not been to the village, and if you've got any concerns about that, or is this one viewer who doesn't speak for all of our audience, if you think that Dennis and I are avoiding some elephant in the room when it comes to crime inside the village, um, we're not, because is it here? Anytime you get 16,000 people or so in a community, you're going to have crime. They're going to be ne'er-do-well kind of people is it rampant it is far from rampant far from rampant so i have not experienced the the most crime related kind of a thing that i have personally been involved in is somebody who just about rammed me coming into the balboa gate trying to tailgate uh and i wasn't stupid i let him I'm like yeah come on i'm not you know i'm not gonna lose lose a bumper or anything over it um Happened to be a villager, by the way, mm -hmm. I found out. So isn't that interesting? So mm -hmm. no, no, the place is ridiculously serene. It's, it's crazy peaceful. It's beautiful. Uh, it's safe. Uh, yeah, I, I, it checks the boxes for me. You know, I've had this conversation, you know, whatever the boxes are for people, there are people that leave here and go to the Gulf coast. There are people that may leave here and go to the East or the West coast. Uh, there may be people who grew up up north and maybe they miss, you know, that kind of a winter. But for many of us who are here, uh, it, yeah, it, it checks the boxes. And I've never lived in a place like this. I have, I, I grew up in Louisiana words. and I grew up around right. big, tall pine trees and whatnot, but yeah, ain't no mountains in Louisiana, you know, so that, that topography, while it's similar it's, it's, it's way different. And I like the melting pot of it. I mean, the fact that this mm. is a, this is a place. Yes, there are plenty of Arkansans here, but there are, there are also a boatload of us who, who chose it, you know, who chose to make this kind of our hometown. Well, I, I was going to say uh, the two things there, you, you you said it checked boxes that you didn't even know you had had boxes for. I yeah. remember you saying that before, and and I do want to in case there's even the inference that we're dodging the crime button. No 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 no. no. I'm more than happy to explain this. That 32 33 years ago, one of my first 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 jobs was working for the Arkansas Crime Information Center, the ACIC. And the ACIC gathers up federal statistics uh, of crime, all kinds of crime, in all areas of Arkansas, and it reports those to the NCIC. So 
I was able to intimately understand the crime numbers, where they come from, where they go. And I sat down with former police chief Ricky Middleton at lunch at Jim, at LG or LG, Eddie's at uh, Hibachi and said, OK, look, you can tell me. I know how the numbers are calculated. How did you get to that number? He said, I picked 10 cities in Arkansas, Harrison, El Dorado, and he went through them roughly the same size, the roughly the same demographic, took the crime per area, the crime per person, and he ran the numbers. And I was like, okay. And that's how he got to 13.6% of the national crime rate. Outside that gate, it's 88%. Outside this gate, it's 86%. So don't talk to me about it. I'll be more than happy to go to the deep, deep numbers with you. There's no elephant being avoided. So yeah, you know, like I said, this was, this was one, and it wasn't a mean spirited kind of a thing. It was just, no, no, this, no, this, but, gentleman, I mean, this gentleman and his wife, they'd never been to the village. They they've got a trip planned in May mm -hmm. and to come and check it out for the first time. And I'm like, you, you're, you're going to love it. I mean, if, if the things that are appealing to you have provoked you to make this trip, I don't know where they're coming from, but if it's provoked you to come to a place that you've never visited before, you're not going to be disappointed, you know, so don't let the crime stats. And I did, I did forward on a few things that I had seen as far as stats go. Um, but I, Dennis and I are not at all trying to talk anybody into anything, and we're not trying to talk anybody out of anything. You know, the podcast started a thousand days ago today because we both love the place and we wanted to shine this big, bright light on it. Yeah. And I'm not saying that other people weren't doing it, but we had a vision and we had this idea uh, that, that we could do it in a unique way, and we're going to keep up on our game. And now here we are a thousand days old, and... We're getting very, very, we're rapidly uh, getting to the place where a lot more video that's way more compelling than what you're watching today is going to be incorporated into the place. And so for those people that have never been here, we're going to give you hopefully a much deeper, clearer view of at least some sense of the place as much as you can relate that, you know, to video and audio. Uh, without being here yourself, but nothing's going to replace you being here. You know, there's just, we, we can't, we can't do it justice. There's a bunch of beautiful places on the planet. Uh, we're not saying that this is the most, you know, gorgeous place on earth, but it's one of them. It's one of them. And it's, it's very affordable. I've done shows. You can go back into the archives about um, getting to this stage of life in your 60s and coming to a place like this and the cost of living here is is just it's undeniable the quality of life in my opinion is undeniable the access to health care is is very good uh, okay shopping and dining Dennis and I've done shows on so if you're a, if you're a hardcore foodie and you eat out every day and you've got to have high brow cuisine, you're going to have to drive. You should but, probably get a better life too, but well, that's me. You know, I mean, if that's what you want to do, it's your money. You can do what you want, but, um, yeah. So, you know, to, to each, to each his own, I, I'm, I'm, it's, it's been a great thousand days. I don't think either one of us, we, we couldn't foresee what has transpired. Uh, our ambitions have gotten loftier. I've, we jokingly said, you know, the constraint to our goals are it's the talent. It's us. I mean, we, Dennis and I are just, you know, we're doing the best we can. We don't profess to be world-class at this. We're, we're working toward it, but the place is way more talented than we are. That's for sure. It has more to share. So for what it's worth, I, you know, uh, yeah, I've got a lake behind me. That's the obvious thing. As as Rick Marshall always says, would you just get out of the way and let us look at the lake? And I think maybe if I was the disembodied voice yeah. and I just sat over here, yeah, maybe maybe that would be right. better. But uh, in some ways, I wish people could just see and point out your window. Now, you have an interior lot, uh -huh. a thousand feet, two thousand feet from the lake, right? Yeah, yeah. We're personally we're think one, it's to we're, die for. Yeah, we're one we're one we're one street off the lake. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's houses on the lake that are for sale on our street. Uh, Where are they now? Yes, you know. So they're doing want, that still. If, that, and that's the other thing I would say. Um, if, if you want woods and you want seclusion, you can get that. If you want to be on a golf course, you can do that. If you want to be on the water, 
you can do that. If you want to be on the water and you want to have, you know, a, a killer boat dock, you can do that. If you want to be on a lake where there's plenty good fishing, you can do that. I mean, the, the options are just, are, are pretty stinking limitless. Um, I'm really fascinated and I kind of keep up. I probably shouldn't, but I kind of keep up with these communities around the country that are aiming at our demographic that are aiming at, and Dennis isn't retired. I'm not retired. I don't know about him. I have no plans of retiring. You know, people, people think because I've hit 65 and I, I decided to start collecting social security. Oh, well, you're retired. How's retirement going? I'm like, no, you don't understand. You're equating me collecting social security, all that money I paid in for decades with me retiring. I'm not retiring. I'm just now starting to recollect my money. That's, that's the game here. Um, but these communities that are aimed at our demographic, you know, are kind of fascinating to me. And some of them, I'm not even going to name a name, but you know, I'm watching a video of, of a community and they've got bonds and whatnot. And this couple has purchased a 1200 square foot house and their, their monthly overhead is it, it's, it's just nuts. It's just completely nuts. Let me forget. They have an assessment that's double ours. And then they have another assessment that's about half that much. And then they have a bond that's a 30 year bond that you can pay off monthly. And once it's paid off on that property, it's paid off on the property, but it's a big number. It's a big five digit number. And, you know, and I don't know, you hear some of the negative Nellies, you know, lament currently as Dennis and I record, if you've got, we'll just call it, if you got a house, it's going to be 110 bucks a month in assessments. And I haven't heard anybody griping too hard about that, you know, because that's in the grand scheme of things, it, it's, it's, it's really inexpensive. Now from a Texan coming from a, a, a non-regulated energy state, the, uh, yeah, the electric, the electric, the electric bill was a bit of a, okay, hello, <laughs> hello, electric bill, you know, but you're talking a, couple of months a year, uh, you know, as for our house, our house is cooler in the summer, probably a little more difficult because the ceilings are so, so tall, uh, probably a little more difficult to keep warm in the winter. But, you know, we had that one week of like sub freezing weather and yeah. everybody was complaining about the utility bills. But if you are looking to, to investigate this place, there's Dennis and I are trying to provide as much information as we can. We're happy to answer any questions that you've got. We're going to do more of that in the future. We're going to get really focused on, on doing some shows that can help you better figure out. Should you even think about it? And if you do think about sure. it, what are your options and what, what, what's the cost going to be? You know, what are, what are the difficulties? And we're not, we're not going to shy away from any of it. You know, there, there's, there's challenges to everything. Um, and there's upsides and downsides, and we want to provide as much information as we can to not just promote the village, but to help people figure out what might be, if it's great for you, you need to know that. If it's mm -hmm. not great for you, you need to know that even sooner. And if the content that Dennis and I bring you guys can help, can help you make those decisions, then mission accomplished. And along the way, we know that we're going to convert some people who otherwise would have never known about this place. And I'm driven by that because random chance brought me to the village in 2018, mm -hmm. just pure random chance. And I would like to improve those odds for somebody out there. Who's like me, who comes here and just like, man, this is awesome. Well, it, it's not lost on me, number one, how you got here, because you were coming to Hot Springs anyway. You just didn't know about the village. But uh, let, let's recap for a thousand well, I didn't days want to real go quick. To Hot Springs. I'd heard of Hot Springs. So when I was really? Googling, oh, yeah, I Googled, and it's like, okay, Hot Springs Village. I'm like, well, I've heard of Hot Springs. Not interested. No offense, Hot Springs. Just yeah, not. Sure. I'm not. I'm not the touristy thing. It just it checks no boxes for me. I love having it nearby for shopping mm -hmm. and whatever but don't want to live there and didn't want to come and visit there. So I had to Google, I, I, I probably spent a good hour, uh, looking for whatever I could find online. And most of that was spent Airbnb. 
Mm-hmm. And you know, I, I'm not crazy. I mean, Airbnb, come on, you, people are going to try to put their best foot forward and make everything sound wonderful and great. And I, I had done plenty of Airbnb and mostly had good experiences because I did my homework. Um, so no, we came over here because I wanted to go to the Ozarks and that was eight hours. This was five. Okay. Well, that may not sound like a lot, but that three hour extra in the car, that's a big deal when you're just pressed for time. And I'm like, I don't want to spend, I don't want to take all stinking day getting there. We can get up in the morning and we can go and we can be there by noon. And that just sounded really appealing to me. I was not thinking about a place to move to, was not thinking about a place to get a house was just, it was a, it was a four day getaway. That's all it was. And wanted to walk some trails. And came over well, and stayed we, in Dennis's base, basement bedroom suite. Just that was a lark. I mean, I didn't know I didn't know Dennis at all. Had never had never met anybody in the village, and uh, the rest is history. Here we are. And how did we meet? A nightlight. That's right. You needed a nightlight. Yeah. I needed to bring you a nightlight. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I will say that we naively a thousand days ago, and I do admit naively, began thinking we were going to make a hyper local podcast. I don't know that there is such a thing, Randy. I don't know that that works so well. Well, the for content, us. the content is, you know, where where I completely misjudged it right out of the gate. We and I, we both realized that. I don't know about you, but I absolutely misjudged it. It's hyper local in that the content is about Hot Springs Village, inside outside. Mm-hmm. Um, how far outside? I don't know. I mean, we we've kind of. We've kind of worked a little bit around the state some, but we've kind of mm-hmm. kept it within a day's journey. But you can go yeah. anywhere in the state in a day. Um, this is not like Texas, where you can travel for two days and you <laughs> haven't crossed the border yet. Uh, so we've kept it with a focus on the inside and some focus on the outside because in spite of the fact that it's a 26,000-acre community, there's a lot outside the gates that's pretty stinking awesome too. So there's some great, great, just, I mean, an hour, two hours away kind kind of places. And Dennis and I have focused on that. I knew the content was going to be hyper-local. Where I misjudged it is I thought, okay, well, the people that are going to pay attention are going to be people that live in the village or people that live in the surrounding area. You know, I, I, I had no clue that we were going to hear from people that were clear across the country that had never visited the state of Arkansas before that we were going to hear from people that were hitting retirement age and they were investigating that duh. It was a duh moment. I mean, it should have been on my radar, but it wasn't. It was started for one real simple reason. I had a bunch of questions and I was super curious and still am. There was a lot about the place I did not understand. And I wanted to find out. And I thought, well, if I want to find out, maybe somebody else wants to find out. Let's just document this. That's how it started. I think one of the things I wanted to mention when you were saying earlier, you know, we love the place and I don't know that we're proselytizers. That's not the word. But, you know, if if I go to a great restaurant, I mean, a great restaurant, I'd like to tell you about it. If if I have, in, in my experience, in your experience, a great spiritual experience, I want to tell you that that works for me. It doesn't mean it's for you. I'm telling you it works for me. Because of that, this place works for us. And I'm not asking you to to become Hot Springs Village devotees. I'm not asking you to become uh, minions or 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 join a club. All we're saying is just come see it. If if you if the if you're watching this, we are now, saying don't and, rain on our parade. <laughs> we sure, sure, sure. Yeah. We, <laughs> I mean, so we're eva- we're so, evangelists. Okay, we're evangelists. We're we're holding forth about how how we how we view it. You know, and thankfully our community, which is, you know, 4,200 and counting our Facebook group, which you don't Mm -hmm. have to be, you don't have to be anybody, just, you know, hopefully you're a fan of the show and you can join that public group, but it's, it's 4,200 and growing every day, which I'm, I'm happy about. And I'm happy that 99.9% of the people in that group feel like we feel, you know, they're just love it. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. you can you can you can be an optimist or you can be a pessimist. You can look at the bright side or you can look at the dark clouds, and that's your choice. You can do whatever you want. 
you know, Dennis and I happen to be kind of sunshine, optimistic folks. Uh, mm -hmm. We're not pie in the sky, you know, head in the clouds kind of kind of people to to the point of that crime thing and some elephant right. room. Uh, no, we're not going to get in politics. Uh, we're, you know, we're going to avoid that and we're frankly going to avoid it even more so in the future. Uh, you know, well, it's just not, it's not what we're about. You know, we're about this place and the quality of life here. Uh, and I, I, there's way more, I think, and it's probably a bias because it's probably who we're hearing from. I think there's way more people in our demographic. Um, and I'm older by a number of years than Dennis. Uh, and it seems close, but it's a gap. That's close. It's close. And it's close, but you know, six or seven years is a, you get to be this age and six or seven years makes a, it, it makes a difference. I mean, it has for me, I look back, mm -hmm. you know, when I was 60 and yeah, that, that felt different than this. Well, two big events. And I've talked about it here in America, Medicare getting on kind of mm -hmm. the national health insurance thing and collecting social security. Th those are, those are for most of us, those are two big financial events. And it's not that, okay, there's this huge windfall of things, but they, they're big enough that they have an impact on your life because most of us that have good insurance, it's, it ain't cheap. It is mm -hmm. not cheap to have good insurance. And you get on the Medicare system and all of a sudden, you know, you can, you can save some money. Uh, for some of us, you can save hundreds of dollars a, a month. Well, that's, that's a, that's a financial quality of life decision. And it's also something that you have to wait until you're 65 to even qualify for ditto mm -hmm. for, you can collect social security earlier at 62, but if you wait for full retirement age at 65, you can kind of collect kind of sort of the max. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that makes a financial impact, you know, on what you can do with your life. And so for my wife and I, we both are about a month apart and those two events hitting at the same time, they, they absolutely made a difference. We both still work. We're both going to work and we need to work. We're not financially independent. Um, as far as just, you know, we're not rolling around over here in Elon Musk kind of money. Um, anyway, all, all that to say, I think there's a whole lot of us. I just think there's a whole lot of us. It is a wave of people. You and I have talked to before, even off camera. The number of people turning 65 this year is going to be record setting. And I think that's going to give places like Hot Springs Village an opportunity to attract people that will love it. The good thing is the people that don't love it, if they do come, they're not going to stay. And if they don't love it, they probably aren't coming anyway. So it's kind of a self-selecting kind of a group, which is also, I think, I think a positive thing. No matter who you are, no matter what you want, get what you want, especially if you're later in life. You want to be on a beach. I hope that you get on a beach. I hope you find your way to, to the Gulf or to one of the coast. Uh, if you want to be in the Rockies, if you want to be in the Smoky Mountains, I, I hope you get there. I hope you find a way to get there. So we're not, yeah, we're not proselytizing, but we're evangelizing for sure. We're getting the word out so that you can make a, make a decision. I was just going to make note that um, it seems to me it seems to me with the number of people turning 65 with the, and you talk about the life changes, you know, we talk about being different people every 10 years or something like that, you know, every, every decade or something. I don't think there's any question that, that, that happens. Well, I can tell you now I'm different probably than I was five years ago. Well, if you're growing, um, hopefully you're different every day. A little yeah, bit exactly. Exactly. A little and bit and I think, well, like I say, the, the crux of it is, this may not be for you. And I'm like you, Randy, if, if the beach is for you, then get to the beach. But if this is for you, at least come visit. Uh, and and I, I make note, I'm because of the people we both hear back from. I can imagine we're a we're a uh, we're a fantasy to some people. Well, someday, 
someday I'm going to get to that hot springs village. You know, I watch this podcast and these guys talk about this place and it, it seems kind of like Mayberry. It just seems really nice. And by the way, shout out. I do have an apology, Randy. Uh, we had a guy over the weekend that joined our Facebook group and he said, I just got here and I don't know what this place is about. What's it about? And the answers oh, yeah, from everybody right. were so good. They were great. Yeah. And I said, it's me and my friend Randy Cantrell. And we're talking about how great hot springs village is. And, you know, I want you to check it out. The things to do inside and out. And and we have 4,400 of our 4,200 of our closest friends here and not one Karen that I know of. And then your dear wife <laughs> noted that her sister's name was Karen and yeah. she was a good lady. And I was yeah. like, okay, with well, all due we respect, had a few people whose name was Karen <laughs> chime in too, <laughs> you know, yeah, they, it, it kind of became a running joke, they, didn't it? They, it was all in good fun. Yeah. They understood. They understood what you meant by it. But yeah, it was funny. What's this all about? I saw that on the Facebook group, and I, thought, <laughs> I thought, okay, I mean, is this for real? And I assumed it was for well, real. People were answering you show it was for real. Yeah, why would you join something you didn't know? <laughs> yeah, anyway, know. yeah, okay. I don't know. Hey, I was I'm thinking glad he did. It's it's fine. It's fine. You know, it's uh, yeah, it's all it's all good. I uh, I think. Here's what I know. If you come and you visit, no matter what the future holds and no matter what decision you make, you're going to enjoy your visit. I, I will be, if you come and you don't enjoy your visit, if you've done any homework at all and, and you're coming because of what you see and it, it looks appealing to you, I will be shocked. I would be shocked if you came and you spent a week, if you spent any kind of time at all, if you're like, oh man, I hate it here. That ain't. Yeah, gonna happen. I don't think that's that ain't, that ain't going to yeah. happen. So the very worst case is you'll have invested a little bit of money to stay somewhere. Uh, there's plenty of nice Airbnb places. Dennis has got some great places right there on that very lake that you see in the background. Um, there's links over at our website where you can check out his properties. Uh, you will have a good time. You 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 will enjoy yourself, and who knows what it will spark. So I, I have one quick question, Randy. I want you to recite, if you would, because, and, and I mentioned the fantasy thing in one way. Uh, I want you to tell about the Andy Griffith episode where the stranger comes into town and knows everybody. Yeah. Because that's kind of what we are in some ways. Well, I, I am. I, I, you know, you are, you were just ahead of me, but, and I don't know if there was a big difference for you you know, being a native of the state and having done some work inside here and having a familiarity with it before you made this your full-time home. You know, for me, it was, it was very much that, that episode of Andy Griffith. So there's a guy, he, he gets off the bus and he comes to town and he's just, he's calling everybody by their first name. I mean, he sees them and he's, Hey Andy, Hey, Hey, Hey barn. And they have no clue who this man is. And he's there, he's there for days and it's just driving people crazy. Well, they start really getting amped up and he, he wants to buy a local business and the guy's not wanting to sell to him because he's acting like he's known this guy forever. Anyway, everybody gets really paranoid and they start getting ugly. And, uh, he asks a local girl out and he, he knows all about her. She doesn't have a clue who he is, you know, and her, her brother gets defensive about it. And it just turns into a, into a mess until finally Andy finds out. He served in the military with a, a buddy who was from Mayberry and subscribed to the Mayberry newspaper. And he didn't have a hometown for whatever reason. We don't know that much about this guy's history, but he envied his buddy's hometown of Mayberry. And he read the paper every time the, his buddy got the paper, he read the paper. So through the paper, he got to know who all these people were and he made it. He just made a decision. I'm going to make Mayberry my hometown. Now he didn't go about it the right way because he set off all kinds of alarms for these people. But finally, you know, of course, Andy holds forth in front of the courthouse and rips everybody a new one because they've been ugly to this guy. And uh, they all accept him with open arms. And I, my experience, my experience is, is really similar. We started the podcast and I didn't know anybody over here. I knew Dennis. Um, but through Dennis's connections and through, uh, I'm still going to give a shout out to John Paul. He was the interim GM at the time. And John Paul gave us big latitude with P 
people who were employed at the POA. And so I was able to get a lot of questions answered by these people that were subject matter experts in, in their departments and started meeting some business owners and started meeting some restaurant owners. And I'd make a trip over here and I'd walk in and somebody would holler at me and I'd, I didn't have a clue who they were. Um, and for an introvert like me, that was a little off putting, <laughs> but, but it felt good at the same time that, you know, because I, man, I'm in a big city, I'm in a big city. And it's not that you don't run into people that, you know, but not often, I mean, not often. It's usually the people that you're there. If you go to out to eat, for instance, it's the people that are at your table. I mean, y'all, y'all met there and to just see people across the way I did grow up in my very early years in a small town in Oklahoma, and I saw it in my parents and my grandparents, like going to a local diner. I, I did see that interaction as an elementary school kid, but that's never been my life. I've never experienced that. So it's kind of weird to experience that late in life, um, but I like it. I like it. I mean, and, and for an introvert who's just happy to stay right here in this little space that I call the Yellow Studio, and do this podcast and some other shows that I do and to work with clients online by way of zoom calls. Uh, it's yeah, it's kind of nice. It's nice running into people. You know I mean? I go to Walmart and there's Joey, you know, Joey Clampett from Clampett's country chick uh, kitchen. And I'm just not used to that. It's just weird. You know, it's just weird for a guy coming from a big Metro area, but it's nice. I mean, that sense of community I think is really, really nice. And that's not the place as far as the geography and the topography. That's people. That's people. And the people do matter big time. And I will have to say, um, and, and this is the wildest exaggeration. I spoke to the PO, the PEO group late last year, uh, last week, uh, which is a, uh, a uh, Williams Auxiliary group uh, over at the uh, – Woodlands Presbyterian, super nice people. And I was introduced as, Randy, the local celebrity. Mm, I don't think so. And, and, flashy, and they were gracious. Did you have your flashy jacket on? Did I you did not jacket? have my flashy Oh man! No, you no. I, I thought about it. I wore just a regular <laughs> jacket because it's more of a low key group. It's, it's a church, Randy. It's a church. Well, I don't care. It doesn't no, matter. but I, I, I will say the one down the side that I don't like. I had my Sharpie, I had my Sharpie. <laughs> the one downside that I don't like is that I don't care for people knowing me and I don't know their name back. That's embarrassing to me because I, I look, I want to connect with everybody. I want to be, I want to remember your name. I just don't, I just can't remember everybody's name. Well, I can't Ricky, remember right? people's names of, that I know, much less people's <laughs> people that I don't know. So yeah. No, my, like I say, I, that. My, my only issue is that I just apologize if I don't know their name, and I, I'm I very sorry. I do remember you telling me, though, we were kind of laughing about it, but I do remember you telling me before we ever recorded. So this was pre the 1,000 days. So this was yeah. this was well over 1,000 days ago. You know, The prep 1,000. Yeah, yeah. The, you know, ready to be famous kind of a comment that you made, and I remember us kind of laughing maniacally and, uh, <laughs> you know, no, listen, it's uh, the visibility is 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 great as people that are just telling the story of Hot Springs Village inside out. It's not lost on us that you you invite us into your homes, into your space, into your earbuds uh and that as the storytellers behind it okay, there there is something there's something behind that, but you and I hear from people all the time about, you know, how self-deprecating we are. And yeah, we genuinely are that way, but it's, we, we are not trying to be highbrow here. And, and as you if, can if, tell, well, if we as are, you can we're tell. failing miserably. So, you know, we're just, we just love the place and we're just trying to, we're trying to do it justice. I don't, I don't think in the first thousand days, I'm not going to be brass, brassy enough to say that we have done it justice. I think we've, We've learned a lot. I would hope that we're better today than we were, although some of those early shows were pretty stinking good. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, and we've gone through in a thousand days, we've gone through a lot. 
you know, I, I stepped away for a period of time. Um, Dennis was out of the country and he got COVID and then I got COVID and I had a house that I was trying to sell and, you know, just life got in the way. And so it's been real harem scarum and Dennis has done the heavy lifting at least for the last year and a half, mostly without me, which I'll publicly thank you for, um, you know, you'd have done the same. I know Yeah, the show, the show is the star is still hot springs village and the star is still the place and the star is still the people that make the place. And I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm real pleased to be part of the community and, and couldn't be happier. It's come at a great time of life for us and Lord willing, we'll have a number of years to enjoy it. I'm saddened by the stories of people. I run into too many people who they set sights on coming here and they came here as a couple and they were here for two or three years. And unfortunately one of them passed and in some cases, uh, the surviving spouse, they stay. And in some cases they go back close to family. Um, and maybe I'm just, those are top of mind stories. You know, I, I hear about them pretty regularly. Um, you know, so that's kind of my prayer. My prayer is that we can do the place justice. My prayer is that Dennis and his wife and me and my wife and you guys and your significant others, that we have enough time here together with these people that we care about. That's as good as it gets. It is. It is. I agree wholeheartedly. And to, to wrap up with the deprecating, if I can, self-deprecating, uh, we did discuss, I talked with Randy this last week. I said, you know, maybe we need to get the beanies and sell them for like 1250. And if we sign them, they're like 1150. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or even 10 bucks Yeah, <laughs> or even 10 bucks. Yeah. If you're interested in a signed beanie, they're cheaper. So just, yeah. You know, if we autograph yeah. it, the value goes down dramatically. So yeah, you, yeah, you. Dennis suggested that it be like fifty cents or something. I'm like, no, it needs to be a deeper. <laughs> if it's autographed, it needs to be a deeper discount than that. So, no, I appreciate it. It's been it's been a it's been a fun thousand days. Lord willing, we'll have a thousand more, and Lord willing, we'll we'll look back and think, man, that, was, that first thousand, they were that was awful. What were we, we did thinking? so we did what such we? a better job telling the stories in the th in the second thousand days. I am excited. I mean, I, I'll Me I'll end my part on this note. I'm 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 really excited about we've made some we've made some significant investments to make video a bigger, 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 bigger part of the of the storytelling and for us to do some things on location, for us perhaps to even do some live streaming and to do some live recording in front of, uh, even if it's a small audience. So we've got, we got some exciting stuff planned that I, that I think can be super fun. And I think our community will get completely behind it and, uh, and support us. And that's, that's the big, big thank you. The big thank you is the people that give us their time and attention. Well, to, to, to springboard off that real quick, this place, as you see behind me, or if you're listening, you need to come see behind me deserves more than two talking heads period it deserves pictures it deserves drone footage it deserves live inserts it deserves a lot 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 better and and it's 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 not for lack of its ability it's lack of our time to put all these things together but we're working on it right randy yeah well like i said you and i are we're the constraint here we are the we are the roadblock to this whole thing you know the talent <laughs> we have found we have found the weakest link and it is us <laughs> yeah we have for sure Randy, it's been a blast. Thousand days. Talk to you soon, buddy. Thanks for watching and listening to Hot Springs Village Inside Out, a weekly podcast starring Hot Springs Village, Arkansas. Visit the website at hotspringsvillageinsideout.com.